Hello, my name is Daniel Gomes. I work at the Portuguese Web Archive and I'm going to talk about the importance of web archiving to historical research. So yesterday's ordinary information is today's resource for historical research. So historians, they analyze books or diaries that were uh, published in the past um, so that they can write history. So in this sense, today's ordinary information will be tomorrow's resource for historical research. So in our days, we are uh, writing e-books and writing blogs instead of diaries and publishing web photo galleries instead, instead of um, photo albums. So this will be the resources for future historical research. Or maybe not. The fact is that the web is replacing printed media and our current days are sometimes exclusively being documented on the web. But the problem is that the information that is published on the web is extremely ephemeral. So the web must be archived to enable future historical research. So the first web archive was created by Brewster Kale in 1996 and is called the Internet Archive. And um, the way that uh, web archiving is made is different from the printed media web archiving model because uh, the archiving and preservation of printed media was based on legal imposition. So the publishers, they were obliged by law to send copies of their documents to organizations that will be, uh, that were responsible and are responsible for, for their uh, preservation to enable future access, such as uh, these organizations are national archives or the, uh, national libraries, for instance. Um, but in web archiving, uh, this model cannot be uh, replicated because the, the law has boundaries that do not exist on the web. So um, imposing, uh, having a model that is based on legal imposition to preserve information that is being published uh, cannot be, uh, is not ef effective on the web. So what the web archives do is that they proactively harvest information from the web to be preserved. So basically, how do the web archives harvest the web? So they, they, they um, gather a set of web addresses. It can be a list of home pages of several interesting websites to be archived. And then they automatically download contents and follow links to new web pages. For instance, you can have the home page of a site and then the web archive collects this information and uh, stores it. So it downloads the, the, the web page and stores it. And then it finds uh, that this web page links to an image and to a new page and then he also collects this information and then he finds that the, the, there are uh, he finds other web pages that on their turn are also collected and archived and this process is rep repeated in an automatic uh, way to collect information from the web. So in November 2001 there are <coughs> at least 52 web archiving initiatives worldwide. In, the, in this Wikipedia page that is named List of Web Archiving Initiatives, we can find uh, a list and description of several of these initiatives. We can find, for instance, the name of the initiative, the link to the, to the site, to the official site, the country that hosts the initiative, and the amount of data that um, is stored by, by each uh, initiative. This Wikipedia page gives a, a good uh, overview of, the, of web archiving worldwide. <coughs> but if you know uh, information on the web that you think that is worth being preserved for later access, you do not need to be an information technology uh, expert to archive it. Nowadays there are services such as the Archive It uh, service from the Internet Archive that enables any person to select contents from the web ar and archive them uh, for later access. So what can we find in a web archive to, is to support historical, historical research? <coughs> well, basically, we can find everything. In this example, we can find uh, 
uh, international events. In this example, we can see um, a web archive that documents the hurricanes Katrina and Rita. So we can find uh, several different perspectives of these events. We can find uh, web pages or sites from, from, from news. Uh, we can find um, documentation about the event that was written uh, in the first person. So there were people that were in New Orleans, for instance, during the event, and they wrote on their blogs what was happening. And then we can s find uh, the documentation about what the, the organizations that went there to, to, to help uh, found. And uh, we can also find information uh, from the official governmental sites. So all these different uh, perspectives about an historical event are very valuable to document it uh, thoroughly and impartially. So to write good history. Another very interesting uh, example is the 2011 Egyptian Revolution. So here uh, we can find a web archive that contains blogs and Twitter feeds um, uh, about the, the, the revolution. Uh, this is a very interesting case because this was a revolution that was uh, planned through the web. S um, then the, the rev revolution itself took place on the web and was organized through the web. And now that there's a new regime, um, all the new uh, policies and the new ideas that are coming up about uh, the, this new Egypt are also being documented on the web. So we can say that this was the first web-based revolution and to be thoroughly documented, it must be web archived. It must be a web archived revolution. You can also find regional events. For instance, on this site, we can see this site contains the official results of the 2001 Portuguese elections. We can also find uh, this web page, that this is the first Portuguese web page and by itself it already contains historical um, information or, or information of historical relevance. So this page was created I believe in 1994 and it was archived in 1996 and here we can see that Macau and Timor are still a part of Portugal and we can also see that there's an Europe homepage, an European Community homepage and a World homepage. So just in 15 years we, we can already witness several uh, interesting uh, difference, differences, at least regarding how the web was used and what the web has become. <coughs> we can also find a personal event. So here we can see uh, a kid's bike that's being sold and uh, we, we may wonder what, is the, what could be the historical relevance of this, uh, of this ad, of this picture. Well, it can be uh, very interesting from an historical perspective because this will definitely be, the, it could be the, the, the someone's first bike and if the owner of this bike will become a uh, world champion in cycling, uh, it, this would definitely be an, uh, a document with historical relevance. So this um, personal uh, history perspective leads us to um, a, a major concern that is um, people nowadays, they <coughs> for instance, they take pictures and they publish this information, this personal information on the web and they do not take, uh, most of the times they do not take uh, any preservation, don't, ha don't have any preservation concerns about the, their data. So I believe that 50 years from now, when people will try to show uh, their pictures to their descendants, they will have uh, nothing to show because as we know, the information is published on the web is extremely ephemeral. So um, we'll have, we will not have photo albums to show to our sons and great grandsons. So. I believe that web archives will be the only source of, inf of memories to many people. Interestingly, interestingly uh, pardon me, um, <coughs> printed media is also uh, web archived and is also preserved through the web and through web archiving. So in this example, 
uh, we can see a blog that every day uh, publishes the front pages of several newspapers, printed newspapers. So in this sense, uh, the web and web archiving is contributing to preserve information that was not primarily, primarily meant to be online. We can also find information that is uh, nowadays already of historical relevance. So this, this picture here um, is from a, a famous uh, square in Portugal and this picture was taken in the beginning of the, um, of the 20th century and it is it was put online on the it was put online on the web on the web and it, it was archived um, in this example we can see um, this is from a, uh, also from a blog and we can see uh, a digitization of the republic's journal that was published in uh, february 1915 and it was uh, digitized by the National Library. And then the author of this blog, um, he, he, he published it here, or he republished it, but he added additional information. So he did a transcription of parts of this document, and then he added uh, additional information that was not initially uh, as pa a part of, of the, the document. So this is also very interesting. So th the web changed how the world communicates. So before the web, only a few people could communicate worldwide. But after the web, everyone can speak their mind to the world. So this is a very uh, radical change in our societies. And in this sense, I also believe that web archive will also change how history is written. Because before web archiving, only the famous could be a part of history. But uh, with web archiving, everyone can have their part in history. Um, but as I said in the beginning, um, web archives, they must select somehow the, the information that is published on the web. And although they, they, they do a very broader archive of information than it was used, um, that it was done by the printed media archives, the, um, it, it is uh, very important to don't miss uh, documents or web pages or sites that are of manifest uh, historical interest. So in this sense, historians, they have uh, a good uh, sensibility to, the, to identif identify contents that are published today, today and will be interesting 15 years from now. So on this site, um, everyone can suggest um, a website to be archived by the Portuguese web archive in, in this case. So to conclude my presentation, 50 years from now, web archives will be crucial tools to enable historical research about our current days. Um, I hope you liked you enjoyed this presentation and if you want to make any comment, please feel free to contact me through my email or if you want to learn more about the Portuguese Web Archive, please, please access archive.pt. Thank you very much.